because I don't know what I'm doing. Just below 21. I think we'll kind of keep that there. Okay. Kill 
Cross belts as required, Cal 5s. I don't even think we have those here, do we? Seat belts, here's uh, something fun. So, Redbird recommends doing the whole thing as if it were real. So, that's why I'm wearing a headset and I'm actually wearing my seatbelt right now. I'm a nerd. Big nerd. Bigger nerd than you. The other thing I thought was fun when I was flying in my own simulator last night, yesterday, day before, who knows. Uh, I went from Corona to Palomar. And as I'm approaching, uh, four point pops up with, hey, here's your ADIS frequency. So, that's kind of cool. Good job, four flight. Not looking for a sponsorship, although that would be really cool, right? I'd be like the only sim guy with a four flight sponsorship. I'd be like Flight Chops and Steve-O one Kenevo, but nerd ear. Yeah, it's totally possible. Prepare 3D, Redbird, you guys. Can't we have the ADIS come through my headset? I mean, I got one plugged in. Here's what the guys at Redbird said. They said that the headsets are really not plugged into anything. So, uh, they're just kind of like intercom -y, and that's it. Is that true? Tell me if that's true. Um, drag about that is if I wanted to do something cool like Pilot Edge, which, separate story there. Um, I do want to do Pilot Edge. I do Pilot Edge at home. And that's a fun thing. Um, but if I want to do something cool like Pilot Edge, how does that work? If the headset here doesn't actually go to the interwebs, right? Just intercom for talking to this guy, talking to that guy, and then talking to, there's a little external boss that, that goes along with it. And then, how does the push talk work? I mean, this to me is push talk. What happens when I push it? Nothing. I mean, I'm still in the sky, so that's cool. Now, the challenge for me is getting over that that uh, mic, that fear of the mic, which is not, you know, it's not a huge deal because, you know, did the whole ham radio thing. Yeah, I'm a bigger nerd than you. I keep telling you. So, I did the whole ham radio thing, and keying up a mic is not a big deal to me. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to flying a plane, and so there's kind of this fear that I'm going to look stupid, right? But now I did do, um, I did do some like circuits at Corona, which is not a big deal because you're on Unicom and you're essentially talking to yourself. I mean, unless there's another pilot around, and then you're kind of just not really even talking to each other. You're just sort of saying, "Here's where I'm at," right? Um, just checking all my gauges again. Everything looks pretty good. I've got the things pretty well synced. I mean, for not knowing what I'm doing, these guys are kind of talking. I mean, it's a little, little bit of a rotation, but not huge. Um, so anyway, Pilot Edge does a good job of walking you through some stuff. And they, like the very first kind of lesson is like you take off from this one airport that is uncontrolled, and you transition to controlled airspace. And you know, within a couple of minutes, you're vectoring to to land and all that other stuff. And that sounds totally cool to me, and I'm really into it, and I want to do it, but I'm still not at a point where I can land the Cessna without just jacking it up. I mean, I can land it, I can get the thing on the ground, but once I hit the ground, and I really think it's because how I've got my hardware set up, as far as the monitors and everything else like that, um, but I land, and it just kind of gets squirrely all over the place. I'd like to not be doing that in front of everybody. I want to be one of the cool kids. Like, there's no secret there. But anyway, I, you know, I want to do that thing, and I want to get to a point where, like, I'm able to fly the plane, like I'm flying a plane, and then now, or as Jay Arsman says, my IFR instructor, um, you know, you want to get to a point where you're just a robot when it comes to, like, things like holding a heading are fine and holding an attitude are fine. You don't even think about that, and then that way you've got brain space to kind of take up other stuff, like talking to people on ATC or troubleshooting a problem, like, you know, before when I was setting a flight plan or changing my flight plan on the, the Garmin GPS because it didn't reconcile with the fore flight, I gained a thousand feet in altitude. That's a problem, you know, um, so I need to be able to kind of be better at this and 
do this stuff, and that's what I want to do before I get on the network and start talking to people and make myself look silly. But then at the same time, like, you don't really learn until you immerse yourself in it and um, just jump in. You know, and so that's that's the kind of battle that I do with myself. The other thing is, is that my sim's in the garage and the cat box is in the garage, and so every now and then my airplane smells like cat poop, and that's not fun. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get the airspeed under control because here's something new that I didn't have in the other guy is, uh, you know, landing gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down a little bit lower. Those up. There's my runway. I think, I think 120 is my flap speed. Also, with this airspeed. Yes, under 120. Good enough. Flaps down. Gear down. That's with the power back. Another notch of flaps. A lot of noise with the flaps. Okay, landing lights on. Fuel pumps on. Good controlled descent. About a thousand feet. We'll slow it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, the glide's slow right now. Oh, no, not by too much. There we go. Nailed it. Flaps are... I got three greens on the landing here. Flaps are mostly down. Slow the glide slope again, that's fine. Get a little bit more power. The runway seems kind of short. But I don't know if you saw that, but man, that seemed like I was coming in steep. Okay, flaps are up. Let's get the heck off the runway. Pumps off. We do. What do you think? Welcome to wherever it is I am. Is a flight.